Picasso is arguably the greatest artist of the 20th century, an artist of extraordinary imagination, unrivaled productivity, and one whose iconic images are universally recognized. A new exhibition, however, that opened at the Tate Liverpool in May, seeks to say something quite new about Picasso, to overturn our views of him as an extrovert, womanizer, and eternal playboy. Bringing together over 150 works from across the world, the exhibition presents Picasso, the political artist, the activist and staunch and highly controversial campaigner for peace at a time of great tension between East and West. More than this, it interweaves his life and work with the external and highly public events which the exhibition suggests played a very direct role in his development as an artist. Professor Linda Morris, AHRC Creative Fellow and Senior Lecturer at Norwich University College of the Arts, is the co-curator of the exhibition and the researcher whose work led to this extraordinary and thoroughly researched presentation of Picasso's life and work. She explains how the ideas behind the exhibition first developed. I'd uh, done some work um, in the early 80s on the Artists International Association, a big show at Oxford, and I'd got interested in Picasso then. Um, I uncovered the whole story of him coming for the Sheffield Peace Congress and published that at the, in The Guardian at the time. Um, and ever since then I'd wanted to return to it. I remember talking with people and saying, why was Picasso so important in this period? And they told me that in the 1930s Picasso's reputation was just a, you know, a good art world reputation. Um, and it was really in, after the Second World War um, that his, he became so important because of what he stood for. And that gave me this idea of looking at what did Picasso stand for. And that was the beginnings of thinking about this exhibition. For the re-evaluation of the work of such a central figure as Picasso, Professor Morris understood that a major research project needed to be undertaken, one that would combine art history, art criticism and political history, and one that required access to the massive Picasso archive in France. How did she set about the task? I approached the Tate um, around about 2002 when we started to talk um, and I realised that I'd need to raise some research funding uh, to really be able to, to work on this project properly at a level that was appropriate to the Tate and I applied for an AHRC grant and I didn't get it and I applied again the second year and I did get it the second year. So that enabled me to travel to do the research on, on the exhibition and I spent a total of about three months over a couple of years in Paris working on the political correspondence sent to Picasso but there were 30 odd boxes of this material and instead of flipping through it very quickly, I just started to get absolutely fascinated. And I think, uh, despite being something of a historian, I had absolutely no idea of post-war political history. And that was really what began to fascinate me. And then relating uh, those events like Franco after the Second World War, the Algerian uprisings, relating them to the paintings that Picasso was doing. Um, and that became the start of where this exhibition was put together from. As Professor Morris makes clear, research is at the heart of this exhibition and of the reinterpretation that it presents. That research is reflected not only in the uncovering of this highly politicized and political strand in Picasso's work, but also in the detailed analysis of the events he was responding to, the newspapers he was reading, the people he was meeting, what Professor Morris calls the backstories of the paintings. Well, for instance, finding documentation about the Charnel House, um, which Alfred Barr had written in '46 as being about Auschwitz and the Holocaust. Uh, but of course it was about uh, a piece of film that Picasso had seen of the Spanish Republican family. Then, obviously the doves are all dated and he's working in, in newspapers and there's a lot of portraits of people, so you start looking up the stories of the portraits of the people and they were all important political uh, figures. Henri Martin 
uh, turned out to be someone who um, blew the whistle on, on French atrocities in Vietnam in the early 50s. So suddenly there were all these backstories that became increasingly interesting. And then I noticed that Picasso was dating a lot of his work by the day, particularly the drawings. And so you could go from that to issues of humanity and find out what were the concerns around that period of time. But Picasso was a very subtle figure and he didn't really talk about these things, but it is all there in the documentation mm -hmm. in the archive. But along with this thorough and rigorous analysis of the archive, the reach and scope of Professor Morris's research is also reflected in the detailed and skillful reading of the artworks presented. The development of the dove motif, for example, used by the United Nations and countless peace campaigns over many decades. The still lifes, a response to the horrors of the Second World War, influenced by traditional forms of vanitas and memento mori, which highlighted the transience of human existence and the interpretation and reinterpretation of the great, monumental and iconic paintings such as the Charnel House. I, I think that the great painting in this show is the Charnel House. It's one of that important series. It's not only Guernica that was a great political painting, but it's the Charnel House massacre in Korea and War and Peace. And there's a sort of dominance of black and white in these paintings, which I think relates to this idea that he was wanted to communicate with ordinary people, but it was through newspapers and film he saw as being the main means of communication, not 19th century history painting. And um, uh, I mean, the Chama House is just an extraordinary painting of. Um, a Spanish family who were massacred in their kitchen um, in France but quite close to the Spanish border and Picasso has seen a film of this and he based his composition on one of Goya's disasters of, of war and this extraordinary head of a baby at the bottom I mean, when I had small children, I used to take them to Italy sometimes and I'd set them to go and look at the animals and children along the bottom of paintings. And I think the painters did this deliberately to give small children something to look at. But uh, I mean, the, the baby's head, obviously dead, but there's this great uh, meeting of hands and toes which is really the sort of tragic part of the painting. It's, a, it's an unfinished painting, and Picasso talked about knowing when to stop on a painting. And uh, I think Greenberg criticised it quite a lot for being unfinished. Picasso, Peace and Freedom runs until the 30th of August at Tate Liverpool, after which it will be shown at the Albertina Vienna. For further information, please go to www.ahrc.com dot ac dot uk